In this video, you're going to learn to use integration by parts to evaluate integrals where the integrand, that is the thing you're integrating, is written in the form of a product of functions. So it's a little like using the product rule for differentiating when you've got a product of functions to differentiate. Although arguably this integration by part method is a little more complicated. So we're going to work these two examples in a moment just to show how the method goes. But just before we do that, let's think a little about the theory. So this is one of those techniques where in theory, it probably looks more complicated than it actually is when you work the example, but bear, bear with me with the, with the theory. So we're gonna take the integral of some product, but the way the product of the functions is written is a little, maybe not quite what you'd expect. So yeah, we know that it's a product of functions, but the way they're written in the general sort of uh, rule, the result is u is the first function, and the second function is not just a function, but actually the derivative of some function. So the second function in your product has to be written as uh, dv dx, and you're integrating all of this with respect to x, so dx. So you've got a product here, you've got some function u times some other function, it just happens to be that that second function, confusingly, the, the v function is not actually just a v function, it's a derivative of some v function. So a couple of things about this. So u itself is a function of x, and uh, v is also a function of x, but this part here is not just v, it's the derivative of v. So you could also think of the integration by parts as u, times the derivative with respect to x of the function v, and then we're integrating that dx. So basically what that means is that when we come to use the result, I've still got to write the result here, but when we come to use the result, you've got to nominate one of your functions as being u and one of your functions as not being the other function v, but the derivative of some function v, okay? Doesn't matter, I mean, it's not, not the case of going uv and uv, you might want to go vu. So the choice is super important and takes a bit of experience in these questions. We'll get to that when we look at the two examples. So what is the result of this or this? These are just two equivalent uh, forms. Well, the result is also a little weird looking at first. So it's basically uv minus the integral of v times du dx dx. Okay, so when we go to process our answer, our result, we're gonna be doing that by using essentially this formula here, which is uv, the product of u times v, minus the integral of the v function du dx. One way you could um, kind of simplify that is sort of crossing out these dx's if you like, as an abbreviated version, just think of it as u me, uv, sorry, <laughs> minus the integral of v du. Okay, that's probably a more compact way to think of it. So again, even in this more compact form, it is still a little weird looking at first. So let's just apply that idea to actually solving, evaluating these two integrals. And it'll make it clearer that the theory does kind of drop off and actually it's not too bad. The main thing you've got to really focus on here is your choice of u and v. And it takes a little bit of experience as to know how to do that, but also, just think about you know, what you're maybe capable of doing. So notice that um, you want your v function, sorry, your dv function to be something that you can integrate because later on we're using v, not dv. So we want to go from dv to v. In other words, to get from dv to v, you need to integrate the dv function. So you want to choose one of these to be dv such that you know you can integrate it. Now, ln x is not easily integrated. So we're gonna focus on instead, I mean, this is not a common result, how to integrate ln x. So we're gonna focus instead on making the x squared our dv function, which means that our u function would be ln x. So that's the first thing with these, just nominating your functions. To be honest, if you get them wrong, it's not the end of the world. It just means that it won't quite work and you've gotta go back and switch them around the other way. And you will definitely do that initially when you're starting this topic. Sometimes I do that even just because I've slipped up and you've chosen the wrong functions. So we're gonna assume that we can let our u function be ln x, and then we're gonna set our dv, so dv dx if you wanna call it that, dv to the other function which is x squared. So all that I've really done there is chosen this guy to be u, this to be dv, just to match the format in the general sort of formula, if you like, for integration by parts. What do we need to do now? Well, we need to work with these a little before we can plug them into our sort of 
formula for the result. So we're going to need at some point du dx. So this is u. To get du dx, we're just going to differentiate this function. So taking the derivative of u with respect to x. So the derivative of ln x, log, that's natural logarithm, log to base c of x, is just 1 over x. So hopefully you know that already. We want to integrate this guy to get it back to v because this is dv. So effectively what we're doing is integrating this, which would be integrating this. You don't need to put in those integral signs, you can just go straight to writing that as v equals whatever the integral of x squared is. Integral of x squared is x cubed over 3, or 1 third x cubed. Technically it's got a plus c on the end, let's not worry about the plus c just now, we're going to be merging that with an with a overall plus c later on. Okay, so basically now this gives us all the bits we need to plug into our formula. So this is, it's not side working, but this is just generating all the bits that we need. Now we're pulling the result um, down here, which is going to be uv, so this is u times v. So that's going to be um, ln x times the other function v, which is x cubed over 3. It might be a more compact form to write that in, we'll figure that out later. We're not too worried about that just now, we're just setting them up. And the formula says uv minus the integral of v du. So the integral of v, the function v, which is this guy here, du. So we're going to need to think about our, our du in a moment. So it's going to be v, which is x cubed over 3. I'm going to actually write that as 1 third x cubed. And we want to integrate uh, that guy uh, du. So that's going to look a little weird, right, to have a a sort of du here. I'll just put it in for this line of work in because the variable here is x, but here we've got a du. It's telling us to integrate with respect to u. So going back to this formula here, we can switch around the subject, if you like, of this formula just by moving this dx over to the other side. So we would actually get dx over x, or you could even write that if you prefer as 1 over x dx. And basically, either way, whichever way you're going to write that, this is giving us du. So this du here doesn't actually need to be a du, it can be a dx over x. So I'm going to put the dx on the end, because that's where we normally put our dx for integrals. And I'm just going to put the over x here, just to merge it with the other x term. So that is going to take a little experience. If you've never done these before, then don't expect to just know how to do that just by watching me do one example. So all that I've really done there is generate all the bits that I need for the formula and start plugging the things into the formula just to start working it forward. Okay, so I'm not too worried about this. You could maybe tidy this up a little. I'm maybe going to write it as... I'm just going to switch the order and write it as x cubed over 3 ln x. I've not really done anything there. I just prefer this order. I think this is maybe a little more natural. That's fine. This guy here, we need to integrate still. Remember, so this formula says you still need to integrate this part. We can simplify this by making it 1 third x squared. Just dividing top and bottom by x, basically. And now we can go ahead and just integrate that. It's in an integratable form. So just retaining this first part and then taking away from that the integral, which is going to be um, x cubed, well, 1 over uh, 9, sorry, x cubed. So that's just increasing the power by 1, dividing by the new power. If you divide 1 third by 3, you get 1 ninth. So that is basically just using the power rule on this guy to get to this guy. And then at this stage, we could put our plus c, our constant of integration, on the end. So it looks very technical, right? It is quite technical, I suppose. It's got a lot of Vs and DVs and all that going on. Once you've done a few of these, though, you will find that it's really just a case of plugging things into the formula. The technicalities aren't going to be the problem. The problem is going to be your selection of U and DV. And you absolutely will get it wrong sometimes. It's totally fine. If it goes wrong, you'll, just, you'll find some issue down here. You won't be able to proceed. You'll just need to go back. There are only two choices, you'll just need to flip them around and try it the other way. One of the other things that quite often happens in these questions is that when you get to this stage here and you go to integrate this guy, even though you've not done anything wrong, you'll find that this won't be in an integratable form. So it's not necessarily because you've made a poor choice here, it's just because sometimes you need to run integration by parts twice. In other words, you, you run through the formula, you get to this point here, and the integral you've got here is such that it also needs integration by parts. 
That actually happens quite often. It's a little bit of a pain. It makes the working quite cumbersome. But basically in those scenarios, you've got to do integration by parts twice. If you're working this topic, you will definitely see that quite quickly. Okay, anyway, let's have a look at the next guy. So this one is maybe a little less obvious what to make your choice for U and V, but my advice would be try to get something for U uh, which is easily differentiable because you're going to be differentiating the U function and then you want something for V which is easily integratable. To be honest, in this case, they're both quite easily differentiable and integratable. So let's just start by making our U equal to X and our dv dx equals the sine x and see what happens. So let's just see if that gives us something that's going to work or if we run into a problem later on. So we'll start by taking our du dx. So du dx, the derivative of x is just 1. Just learning from what we did over here, we realized here we had to pull in the du. So once you make your du dx, I would recommend just at that point rearranging it to get du, to get du basically as the subject of that little equation, that little formula. So you can do that just by multiplying both sides here by dx. So you end up with uh, just du equals dx or equals one dx. So it looks kind of weird, but that's gonna happen every time where you've got an x basically, and you're using the u to be x, just because you're always gonna get a derivative of x of one, and therefore du over dx equals one, or du equals dx. So in other words, you're gonna see this a lot. Looks kind of weird, it is correct, so it's absolutely fine. Okay, so that gives us what we need there with the u's. We've got dv dx, we need to integrate both sides to get v. So v is gonna be the integral of sine x. Sine integrates to negative cosine, so it's gonna be negative cosine x. And that gives us basically, again, everything we need. So I'm just gonna put this in a box. You don't need <laughs> you don't need to use a box for that. I'm just doing that to say that this is us gathering the information we need to then plug into the formula. So going back to the formula, we need to start by doing uv. So we've got a u and we've got a v, so that's good. So that's gonna give us uv, which is gonna be minus x cos x. Subtracting from that the integral of v du. So v is this guy here, minus cosine x. We're integrating that du, but I don't need to put du this time because I can just go and say, well, du is dx. So we can just change that to uh, dx. So integrating with respect to x. Um, and then we're good to go because this has popped out to be in an integratable form. So there's no additional use of the integration by part method or anything else. It's just ready to go. One thing we could do, just to make it maybe easier, take the negative out of there and just pull it basically in front of the integral, which would merge with the other uh, negative to make a positive, just to make it a little cleaner. And then just going ahead to integrate the cosine x. So cosine integrates to positive sine. So this is just going to be positive plus sine x and then plus your uh, constant of integration on the end. So we're done at that point. You might just want to switch them around to get rid of the negative from the start of the expression. So we get sine x minus x cos x plus c. So quite, quite a nice example, fairly standard example that if you're just starting integration by parts like a trig function and some kind of x or an x squared or something like that. But I would warn that even moving this up to an x squared or making this a some variation of sine, just a tiny change can make these significantly more difficult, particularly when it comes to doing the first round of integration by parts. And this guy is not in an integratable form. And you've got to do integration by parts again. So you've got to be really, really careful with that. Unfortunately, I don't have any board space left to show an example of that, but that is the next stage once you've got over this initial part. One other thing we can do with these, we can make them into definite integral. So again, I'm not gonna run through an example of that here, but if you did make this into a definite integral, so let's say it was the integral between, um, let's go one and three, all that happens there is you end up putting a one and three onto your square bracket. So I'm assuming you're familiar with definite integrals already. So because this part, U, the UV part has already been integrated, we put our limits one and three on there, and then we just perform the second integral between the limits one and three. So there's no great change really when you move to definite integration by parts. You just kind of do what you'd expect to do with a definite integral. So if you're studying integration, I hope that, that helps. Integration by parts is a really powerful 
useful technique. It's in a bunch of question types because there's so many functions that you want to integrate which can be written as a product of functions. So it's definitely worth spending some time getting really familiar with this technique. And if there's anything in these examples you're not sure about, just leave a question in the comments box below.